Very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, um, I, I, I got the power source of, uh, from, from Marcus Erle, which enables me to do my presentation at all today with a little more practical stuff. So thank you very much. Also, uh, thank you to my, my friend who is sitting in the first row who has been making sure that I do get my coffee and my cake and everything. So it's awesome. Wonderful people there today. I just thought I would let you know. Thanks a lot. Um, now, I thought uh, we, would, we are basically going back to the beginning, so if you, if you got the message right already at uh, 9.30 this morning, you can leave if you want, or, or browse Facebook and whatever. But I thought I would just show you what it means if we, uh, people with disabilities, are confronted with both. First, we're going to look at some not correctly tagged, which means inaccessible PDF documents, and after that, we are going to enjoy some accessible reading, um, which is always good because, yeah, as we heard in the introduction, accessibility can become uh, just one huge theory about topics and tags and technicalities and stuff. And we often forget to think about the people who actually are going to rely on that. Yes, there are people with disabilities, and I happen to be one of them, and what I often hear when I'm working or, or back at the time I used to um, talk to web designers or, or PDF writers on an almost daily basis, I would hear things like, well, why uh, are there people with disabilities who want to read my documents at all? Don't they have someone assisting them anyway who is going to read the PDF documents for them? In fact, isn't it quite easier if someone normal would read the PDF documents for them instead of them having to use those complicated devices in order to gain access? The answer is actually, well, yes, there, I, I might be able to find people assisting me with that, but I don't want to. And, and, and uh, the other answer would be, yes, of course, I want to have access to all the documents. The, the very stupid reply is actually, if you guys out there think that normal people have the right to access your services and documents and products, then please don't be so arrogant to even think that people with disabilities do not deserve or want that access. And yes, you can come uh, to me if you uh, cannot think of any excuse. If you want to discuss special cases like why does a blind person want access to a photography site? Yeah, it happens. Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a student recently who wanted to ask me why should computergames.dk be accessible for the blind? I told him. Do you know why? <laughs> hmm? There are blind people playing games. I don't. I, 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 I should. I have much better things to do instead of like, talking to you guys. But then, no, I was, I, one, of the, one of the responses you could think to, uh, um, of would be what happens if blind people multiply themselves? I, I can demonstrate you how that works. And, <laughs> and then we have children, and those might be sighted, and then they want to play computer games. And how do I, as a blind father, know which games are suitable for my child, except for going to computer games of DK and looking it up myself? That would be one. But I'm actually tired of, of, of playing the blindness missionary and explaining why I need everything. So the, the simple reason is you want people to access your content, so you want people with disabilities to access it as well. Finito, there is nothing, um, there is no need for me to explain any further. Um, but I'm going to show you how we access the documents because this always leaves a great impression. So whenever you are working on your PDFs in the future, you will hear, hear the voice of my beautiful computer in your ears in order to remind you of what you have to do. Um, ah, well, yeah, I'm going to skip some, some sentences because I, I fear that some people have already heard my demonstrations. You probably remember how many people with disabilities are out there, more or less, do you? Have a guess? You're up there? 
<laughs> Good morning. And so it's uh, the, the World Health Organization is uh, estimating that there are about 15%. There are other uh, estimates that talk about 27% of the world's population. It really depends on what you consider to be a disability. Uh, recently, I think it was last year, the World Health Organization estimated that there was about <laughs> 1.2 billion people with disabilities in the world which I think is quite a market. So if you want to make money, target people with disabilities, I think. And uh, I, I personally, for me, there is a, the, the percentage is about 100%. We have 100% people with disabilities because I define a disability as something you are weak at. Like basically, I am not very good at seeing with my eyes, while some people of you might be not very good at whatever. Um, using your iPhones or whatever, then I, I could help you with that. Just hand me your phone and that will show you what you can do. So, the disability is a weakness and we all have one of these. And if you think that way, that will anyway eliminate, eliminate the question, do people with disability want my content at all? Now, how do blind people use computers? Because that's one of the most uh, often frequently asked questions I get. This is very easy. The problem is I am a, well, you know, I like taking things apart. My computer, for instance, working with screwdrivers and stuff, and I only wanted to replace my hard disk, which worked pretty well. Unfortunately, I broke the internal keyboard, which now means that I always have to carry this external keyboard around to working with my laptop. So please know that usually a, a blind person can just use any computer as long as there is a screen reader installed on it. We do not all need external keyboards except those stupid ones who manage to take the computer apart and not putting it back together correctly again. So on this computer I have my screen reader which sounds like this. Oh. This is awesome. Do you understand any of it? Because I don't, I have to admit, because we have, <laughs> we have a lot of echo in here, and uh, I switched it to English, hoping that we would understand it a bit better, we all uh, knowing English very well. So I switched it from German to English, and it's also set to a very high speed. So the speed is not a problem for me because I have always set it to that speed. I was always asked to show off at the beginning to see how fast I can go. <laughs> <laughs> However, when it tells me things like papaya record 1 of 26, then it takes some interpretation to know that it's actually papilla corp, which means trash. And it's one of 26, which is the first of 26 items. A Vera Launcher 2, 5 of 26. And HT Home Run View 9 of 20. I, I also have the most difficult apps installed on this device sometimes. Now, so this is how it sounds. We are going to slow it down a bit now in order to try to understand it a bit more. And then we are going to dive in some PDFs to show you how things sound if they are good or bad and anything in between. The screen reader I'm using on here is the freely available NVDA. It's called Non-Visual Desktop Access. It's not only free, it is actually developed on an open source base. So if uh, you are a developer and you don't like any functionality of it, you are invited and able and allowed to change it according to your liking. And um, it's also a great resource to download and um, make it, to, and to test out how large the nerves of your friends at the office are by just having it run in the background all the time. Beautiful. It actually comes with a much weirder sounding speech, so yeah, it, it, they will like it. Try it out. Now let's slow it down a bit. 30%. Let's try the papyre chord again. Yeah, if you know what it means, you do understand it. A, B, B, Y, Y, fine reader 12, 2 of 26. You got that? A, B, B, Y, Y, fine reader, yeah, see? 
<laughs> Glad you're still listening here. Now let me let me be nice and connect some some visuals here. Das Kabel kann etwas langer sein, ne? We all have to save money somehow. Ah, here we go. All right. Have you seen something yet? No. Okay. I mean, you can easily lie to me. You just go and say, yeah, no, I don't see anything. But you try and lie. Um, what do I do? Asterisk with Jill with a Windows 10 update. Burn the top list. Ah, I love it. It's called a display switch.exe, by the way, if you ever find your FN key broken. Display switch.exe slash external, but that's for the next seminar, isn't it? So now, I prepared some, I pre uh, prepared some documents. However, if you if you are in the crowd and you have a document which you absolutely want to have tested this afternoon, you can let me know the link. You can either uh, yell it to the for uh, over here to to me or throw a tomato or two, take organic ones, or you can send it by Twitter at the Swissionary, which uh, I I might read if I don't That's get it. The Swissionary, see, you just tweet it to that link and then we can see what happens. Now. Um, Such window, left built in, file and PD file list. So, as you see, I, I ordered them. I, I thought I would just take you through some of my experiences with, with PDFs I had recently. I always like to take uh, examples from my real life, just in case, well, just to show you that I really do have those issues. For me, accessibility is. Um, as you already heard, part of the daily life, and I always used to say, when I work professionally as an accessibility evaluator, I uh, am getting in touch with everyone who wants to do something about accessibility, and then I get home, or I go to school, or whatever, I'm basically a private person, and then I'm in touch with everyone who does not do anything about accessibility. So that's the difference. So we start with the part where people don't do anything about accessibility. Here, for instance, this is... Um, a book in German, which we are going to read, but let me first show you this dialogue box. Do you see that? Yes. It's about the Leserichtung. I think we already talked about that. It's the German word for reading order. And when we have a PDF document without any text, and you fire up Adobe Reader, and it detects, because there are some symptoms that make a blind person's computer look, well, suspicious. <laughs> that they say, well, you might use an assistive technology on here. Why don't I, <coughs> PDF, uh, Adobe Reader, just have a guess at what the reading order could be? So I say yes, because what else should I say? Now it starts to... This is a feature of P uh, NVDA making acoustic noises representing the progress bar on the screen. <laughs> This is a book I'm supposed to read for my exams coming up in January, if you want to help cross fingers. Let's read it together. You have to understand some German, but let's just... Page 1, Lizette's number, three page on. Page 2, Lizette's number, three page on. Page 3, Lizette's number, three page on. Page 4, Lizette's number, three page yes, on. Uh, I think I can remember that. Well, yeah, and so it's quite interesting actually. Let me show you this. It's one of my favorite. Page 29 was that number. What a cool. So, okay, for those who didn't understand, it said page, and then you insert any number you would like. Lizenz number, which is Lizenz name, which is owner of license, Rene John, which is my name, mispronounced. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't say anything else. And I have to learn this book by January. Um, this is a this is a downloaded ebook. I think they try to make sure that no one ever is copying this ebook. I found, of course, meanwhile away. What I have to do is I have the to open the infamous, um, where do we have it? This one, fine reader, well fine reader. reader. And then I have to open the PDF document and ask fine reader to scan it, pretend that it's just a normal printed document, and 
re-optical character recognize everything in it, and then I have at least the text. But as you heard my expression from earlier already, what I have is basically a worm of words without any structure, but what do I have to do? I, I just have to have this book by then. Unfortunately, the book is actually longer than 30 pages, it's about 400 pages long, and um, having a book without any structural information and having to read it and actually to find things in time is very, very difficult. So yes, it's important to include structural info. So you're zero to map. So, license name on a young... Now, let's do the next step. What? Let me tell you how we came here. We flew Swiss International Airways. And, uh, which offers Swiss quality services and products, so you could expect, well, whatever. And we tried to uh, tell them that uh, my friend and I, we, we are both disabled, we are blind, so we, we according to, um, uh, to European law, we do have um, the right to request assistance. Someone who prevents us from, you know, jumping into the wrong plane or something. Swiss International Airlines has a form. It's a PDF form. Uh, the Jets document or little. Which is not tapped. One that special involves one that special assist. So, let us read this one. Phase one fourth of this possible preparation. Placenta Tuskimo Aquatheta Biopaxis Dance I will need as soon as. The outbreak of life, or the latter than 48 first separate departure punct of the Avalidin in the tail. Yes. No? Did you get it? Okay. I'm sure you read it on the screen. For the best possible preparation... Oh, oh, I forgot to show you this device. This is, by the way, something that is connected to my computer via Bluetooth has nothing to do with me taking things apart, although we'd like to see how, how it looks inside, I, I might try it. It's called a braille display, it's actually also a braille keyboard, there are keys as you see, you can type with that, and it gives me the ability to uh, walk around as it is Bluetooth enabled and read what is on the screen, well until now it just switched off for some odd reason. Hmm. Well, anyway, so, uh, and on here I can read what it, what the screen reader is trying to communicate. Unfortunately, this document reads, um, The reason why it is talking in gibberish right now is that it cannot, for some reason, detect spaces between the words. <laughs> So, uh, yes, oh, I'm glad. Those, um, how are they called? Spiegel neurons, mirroring neurons work really well. Hey, you feel the pain, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix the braille real quick. General setting. Uh, Sit, because voice, the braille just voice, got out. Voice setting. Voice setting. I don't need voice. One that special was. References. What braille settings are. Oh, braille setting. One that special was yeah. So, well, that is, that's the problem. For the best hyphen possible preparations, come on, please make, oh, let us know about the type. Anyway, but we don't want to read it. We actually want to fill it out, don't we? So let's just see. Title, name, surname. Title, name, surname. Edit. Now, let's see. Edit. Yeah. Edit. 
Where? I think it's the problem that uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the person from the keynote, I, I forgot his name, I'm not very good at names, mentioned where, he, where I, I am almost sure he faces about this barrier when he's trying to get, what else, the birth certificate for his child. And he probably must fill out a lot of um, edits and blank. blanks without ever knowing what. Um, um, it's not even interesting, but there isn't any checkbox or radio button, it's like all um, edit. Oh, there is one. Ah. Beautiful, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's called... Um, um, yeah, we are not a checkbox, not checked until your checkbox, not checked until your... Okay, it says checkout box, not checked, deactiviert, which is German again, which means uh, uh, animals are large. Most of the time. understand some children, don't you? So, next. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, I thought, uh, well, let's just assume we would have made it to Denmark safely and now we love you, which we do, we love Copenhagen, by the way, and um, we would like to stay here forever. So let's read the Welkomstmappe 2015-05-05, which can be downloaded if you Google Citizen of Denmark, then follow the uh, and yeah, it's getting boring, isn't it? Page seven, first steps in Denmark. So let's see here. Uh, first steps in Denmark. We have a checklist moving. The Denmark. What to remember in the first thirty days after your arrival in. Uh, the, the reason why it makes this break is because it really makes a line break after all these. Denmark. <coughs> when you arrive in Denmark, there are a lot of important missions to be. A wary office foreign citizen. Oh, that was another long word. A wary office foreign citizen was one and word. The following checklist we have listed matters of particular importance. So sometimes there are spaces, sometimes there aren't. Go next list. Um, now it says we have a list here. In the following checklist we have listed matters of particular importance. But there aren't any. Go next list. My screen reader cannot detect any lists. Now, if I would like to jump to the next heading, no next heading. There aren't any headings either. No next table. There isn't any. There might be some graphics. No next graphics. No graphics either. Okay, I give up. <laughs> <laughs> this is one. Of, this is another worm example. But you know worms, don't you? I mean, it's raining outside. We'll find something. Just yeah. Just imagine your favorite newspaper without any structural info and then tell me if it still would be your favorite newspaper after all. Let's skip this part, let's see some um, uh, uh, forms. This is actually... Uh, are we getting there? So, did you see that we did not see the, uh, the dialogue telling me that there aren't any tags in this document? Yes. This is actually, Man. I think this is one of the documents which you have to fill out, at least as an EU resident, in order to apply a, 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 a zero kind of citizenship card for Denmark. Uh, one version 311,014. Yep. Table with two rows and three columns, row one, column one. As you hear, my screen reader is now able to tell me something about the structure of this document, whether it is something useful or not, I doubt it, but at least, yes, we have a table with uh, uh, a couple of rows and a couple of... Absolutely not me, no. Oh, well, of course, now we have uh, some Danish and some English mix. Our document. Column 2, column 3, row 2, column 1, application for EU, residence document, column 2, column 3, out of table blank, blank, photo, 3, here probably we have to, five, four, five, uh, yeah. to, to stick in a picture and blank. everything, e so now let me see if I would like to jump just from heading to heading, does that actually work, I just press H, which means I'm asking my screen reader to find the next heading. I think it's pretty something that you sighted people are doing too, because if you are looking at, a, at a, well, any page, let's see a newspaper page, you don't just start reading at the top of the page, do you? Instead, you are looking to where is there something large printed, like basically something bold, something, well, let's just say a heading something that catches your eye, basically. And then you start from there, don't you? 
because, or on a web page, you don't just read the entire navigatory like area. Instead, you jump right into the middle of the screen where there is the actual content. So let me tell my screener to jump to the heading. So, and it finds the heading. Unfortunately, it is a, it's a heading on page eight. So we skipped a lot of content. And then there is another one. Then we have the uh, appending speed. And then we do have some other some other tables and everything. So this is something which is well not nicely done, but it does have some tags. So basically, I don't know what exactly happened here. It seems like some different documents were kind of merged together, and some were more or less appropriately tagged, tagged and some warrants, I don't, I don't have a clue. But it's still difficult for me to become a Copenhagen citizen, isn't it? So, now, you're still up? Yep. This, yes. is a, this here is a, uh, is a uh, document which I cannot read at all, but it's <coughs> not because of missing tags, it's because I am still just not very good at Danish. I tried to learn Danish with the Duolingo app, by the way. But for some reason, they only teach me things of the kitchen, so I, I, I know how to say that the cat is eating my apple. <laughs> <laughs> but no one ever wanted to hear that from me, so I don't know. So, yeah, this is a little sad. I didn't even find an, an uh, Danish-speaking voice synthesizer to, to install. Um, but um, you can see if I... Try to list all the headings because this is another thing my screen reader can do if the documents are appropriately tagged. Then I can actually make it look for elements. Elements list by. Filter by. Um, blank. Blank. Oh, or I could. Active. Filter by. Edit plus F. Blank. Right now I do get empty dialogue boxes, which means maybe something is wrong with my with my uh, with my um, NVDA, but then you still get to see yes. something like this is probably I think this should be a list of all the headings in this document. It's the it's it is. It, it, it is. <coughs> is it? Yeah. Oh beautiful. Okay. It is the links. Okay. I'm glad someone is getting um Having an idea. Yeah, you can you can hear this box where it says filter, one can actually select things. For some reason it does not show me what my selection is, so even NVDA is not accessible to me, which is weird. Mm. But then yeah, what yeah, that's just the thing. So and uh, and this this summarizes everything. So if we are looking for headings, then it gives me something like a table of content. If this document is uh, is uh, appropriately structured, page I can also, one. of course, if I want to jump from heading to heading, then I just press H. Page three, fair bibliotheca, better or bibliotheca. Yeah, better bibliotheca. Bibliotheca. You're back at the worms now, I think. Well, so this is the. Uh, it's called. Uh, Oh yeah, the kit or something. It's the newspaper of the local of the, the domestic organization of the blind here. They have, a, a, it, as far as I understood, a beautiful um, calendar of guide dogs, not of cats eating apples. <laughs> beautiful. So. Uh, we are back at my hero now, Marcus Erle. I asked, I asked a bit around because one of the things is yes, uh, and I agree, there is a lot being Maybe done when it comes report. to accessible PDF documents. At different places, document after document is being made accessible. The unfortunate truth is that we, uh, like people with disabilities and, 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 and everyone, we are not living in an isolated world where only those documents exist. And um, we, we heard it in the morning where, where Mr. Spencer already uh, told us about his experiences where the company tried their best to make things accessible and all they got was the criticism for the one thing that was not accessible. And um, the problem is that 
you know, see, my experience is that one, having one thing accessible is often not quite enough. I, um, I was just recently talking to my tax registry office in, in my country, which I hate to do because it's about taxes. And um, they tried their best to make their website accessible. So even we, the blind, uh, don't have any excuse anymore for not paying our taxes. And they succeeded. It's now completely accessible, well, more or less accessible, because me being an evaluator, of course, I always find mistakes. <laughs> I do trust me. But the problem is, we still cannot fill a, a, a claim, like fill out our, our tax declaration on our own, because in the tax declaration, we have to fill in how much salary we got the year before. And believe it or not, but more or less by law, uh, the law is that we have to get our salary receipts on a printed and a printed out document of paper, which then I have to scan using Fine Reader, which then, after OCR, is ending up giving me an entirely huge and not understandable mess of different numbers and languages because everything has to be printed in three languages on one paper in my country, at least when it comes to the salary testimonial and so on and so on. So it's, 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 uh, the, the sad truth is that even though one party is doing their best to make sure we are, we, we have an accessible um, entrance to the system, um, if one other party fails, then the entire idea is gone again. Do you get the picture? Yeah. It's uh, miserable. That's why we all have to work together and so on. Anyway, so now here we are, um, um, so, so I, I, I asked around if we could get an accessible, a, a lately made accessible document, so Mr. Marcus Erler provided me with something he was uh, working on or, or access for or whoever it was had been working on recently and I asked for something, well, a little more challenging than just a newspaper with headings. So he came, uh, came uh, up with this one, it was so thanks a lot for that. And if we, uh, something I would like to show you was, if we are looking for tables. Table with five rows and two columns, row one, column one, page. I can do that. So now let's hear how NVDA is rendering the table in order for me to see, to read it correctly. Because as you already uh, deduced, the problem for us, the blind people, is we have to read line by <coughs> line, like a linear access to the document, while you, the sighted people, usually have the entire document in front of your eyes, quite literally, don't you? So you have the, the possibility to basically look up at the table header and see, ah, this is about that. But if you only have one line, then it can become quite difficult to actually read a larger table. So this is not a very large table, but you will see exactly how NVDA is going to provide the context of the data I'm navigating. Challenges. This is challenges, this is one heading. Column two suggestions. In the column two we have suggestions. Now listen carefully what it says now. Row two challenges, column one challenge. Lack of shared understanding of the concept of inclusive education in Malawi. So it said challenges. Lack of well, of course, it also says it in the in at the beginning of this row as well. But first, it was actually reading the heading, after, and after that, it was reading the actual data. Suggestions column two suggestion. Coordination committee for inclusive education. Row 3 challenges, column 1 challenge, lack of collaborative networking and coordination. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Or here? Yeah. Do you perceive? Row 4 challenges, column 1 challenge. This is awesome, I, 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 I like this. So what, they, what the designers or the editors of this document could do, even without breaking accessibility for us, they could, at the beginning of these data cells, in, uh, actually get rid of this challenge column or <coughs> suggestion column things, but then I think it would make the table uh, less readable for the sighted, which we don't want. So, this, this is one of the advantage when it comes to, uh, when it comes to making documents accessible. International collaboration executive summary of the yeah. report of Toby. My computer Toby is uh, refusing to stop now, see, it really likes talking to you guys. Okay. 
So this is basically the end of my presentation for now, but I think we could see if someone tried to Twitter me because I promised I will see. Oh. I'm speaking at PDF Accessibility Days. Merci Simon. <laughs> And the PDF Accessibility Days noticed that I was explaining my Braille display, which is good. Okay. I think we have mainly, yeah, I think we have mainly, mainly pictures tweeted about me, which is pretty nice. Thank you so much. It will, it will, it will sit in my album and everything, which is good. <laughs> yeah. But um, do you guys have any questions or would like to see a certain PDF document read to you right now? Questions for Renee? Mark. Yeah. Thanks, Renee, for that great presentation. Um, you mentioned documents, or you showed uh, documents without spaces between words. Yes. And my question is, how severe is this barrier? Um, if you have um, <coughs> sometimes uh, words without spaces, because um, the issue is, there are documents, for example, um, they do not have spaces at the end of every line. Mm -hmm. And so you get regularly all the words at the end of one line is without a space with the first word of the next line. Mm -hmm. And I always say this is really severe. Um, some clients say, oh no, look, only every tenth word is uh, without spaces or so. How severe is this barrier? My first question, and the second question is, do you really face accessible PDFs in your real daily life? Have you ever faced an accessible PDF? Not in your professional presentation life, but in real life, you want to do something, and then you, oh, it's, a, it's an accessible PDF. You really do want to be discouraged, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question is, yeah, the answers are yes and no. <laughs> Yes, I think this is a real problem. <clears throat> well, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you uh, just, just, uh, of course, you can, you could, how severe the problem is, one might argue is a case by case issue. Like, is it, if it is a, a verb of belletristic, then you could say, verb, whatever. Some words stick together, well, who cares as long as you get the content of it. Then, if it, if it is a book about mathematical formulas or let's say an annual report listing uh, incomes and, and, and expenses, that could mean, uh, well, if you write numbers wrong, then you can, you, can, you can get imprisoned if you do too many mistakes, I heard. Yeah. And I should know, I'm from Switzerland where we <coughs> have money. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I, I, but we, 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 it's saying things like, oh, let's see, it's only over every tenth line, it's, and for me, or every tenth word, for me it has something disrespectful towards people with disabilities somehow. What, why should they have a clean copy? I mean, those few. Yeah. And, uh, my, and um, yeah, but then, yeah, I, I admit, if I have only my, my speech, like NVDA as a speech synthesizer reading things to me, then sometimes I don't even notice when it is like a, a whatever, a newspaper article. But then again, as soon as it is it's a com more complicated document or something where, well, literally every character counts, like a, uh, the last issue I had where it was very, very severe, where I had to write to the publisher to really ask if they could fix it, was a uh, a manual on iOS application developing, where you know you have programming code, yeah. and then you cannot just write everything without any spaces because yeah. the application won't run, or not as you want to. And so, so um, yeah, it may be a case by case, but for me it has something. It also um, leads to the, to bad reputation. As my my friend here in the first row, she's very good at proofreading stuff, and she. Uh, she, she, if, if she reads newspapers and she finds spell, spelling mistakes or, uh, well, spaces left out because if it's only every ten words or so, she is kind of, um, well, she starts trusting in the credibility of the editor. The other question, uh, what was the other question? Ah, if it, uh, yeah, well, no, I hardly, have I ever found a document which was accessible? Uh, the last 
one that was semi-accessible was when I had an accident, I was smiling, <laughs> and then I ran into one of these stupid city maps, <laughs> and then I had to find a new dentist, and I had to claim my accident to my, my health insurance, and they had a document which could be filled out on the computer, and I filled it all out, and then it was rejected. And then I ended up finding out that um, when I filled out the edit fields according to what my screen reader told me I should, then the information was filled in all wrong. Where my name should have been, I put in the reason of my accident, and where my birthday should have been, there ended up being my telephone number, and all other things. So, no, I have to say, no, I, I hardly ever... And I must tell you this, too, and this is almost what I said before. I, I have stopped trusting in uh, PDF forms, especially, a long time ago. I must have, because I have so many... I have so much... A 99.9 .9 inaccessibility quote then I always, 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 always will prefer having a HTML form, which I can, in the worst case, analyze the the HTML code and try to fill it out like that. So, and uh, yes, I'm sorry, but whenever I give a seminar and people ask me, which you don't dare, but I will tell you anyway, then I will tell them, if you have a form, use HTML, because it's just, obviously, it seems to be too much of a challenge for anyone to make sure a PDF form is accessible in daily life. Mm -hmm. On that sad note, no, let's do other questions, please. <laughs> They're more of that cake. No questions. <laughs> Renee, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>